It's Enlightened Up with Craig Shoemaker. You probably knew that because you downloaded it. It's not like radio. We have to remind every five seconds. You've got some some director telling you, make sure you keep uh, tagging the show and everything else, promoting it. No, you already know. You're here. You probably have listened to other episodes or watched this on YouTube, and I hope you have, and I hope you extend that out to other people. Let them know. Give some reviews. Uh, lots of likes, loves would be great. I don't know if that's an option when you're at Spotify or whatever it is, but make sure that you pass the word on because it is different what we're doing. As we had a guest here, we're, it's love, compassion, empathy. That's what we're trying to spread around. And what better people to do that than comedians? We have comedians, I have lots of comedians. We have other guests too, but mostly comedians. I'm Craig Shoemaker, been a comedian for a while, for a minute, since high school, Ava Tamini's backyard. For, for beer. That's what I did. That's what I did comedy for. Started in Philadelphia and have really like accrued a lot of friends along the way and people that even I, have, I haven't seen them. We all know that we're connected and our guest is no exception. Our get, my guest today, we met, to, we were just saying, I think it was 1998 <laughs> and she was like a month here working on uh, a show that just made my career. <laughs> magic hour with magic johnson alicia cooper's here i am so happy you're here i'm so happy let's not talk here, about Craig. the magic hour okay. that was that was the, the yeah. tragic hour it ended yeah. my career it lasted a magic hour <laughs> that was a magic minute <laughs> that's the truth now, i want to start with, right off with something i didn't know you were married you had a big old rock on your finger yeah, never yeah, knew you were married years. not that i'm hitting yeah. on you or anything but. <laughs> no, you know what <laughs> six years ago i was no longer able to make my move on you <laughs> Well, that's been a long time coming. So now I I would not be your type. Would I? Am I your type? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. Seriously? Alpha. You know, I just and a beta guy is not my type, but definitely an alpha guy. Somebody who goes out and gets it. You're a hunter. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm a gatherer, so we'd be perfect. You wow, you gather yourself a good ring gather, from the hunter. I, yeah, I, I gather yeah, all the clothes in the mall. He's bagging some good <laughs> shit there. I'm noticing jewelry and bling and nice shoes that are shiny, like Dorothy yeah. from The Wizard of Oz. Got to have the shiny shoes. I had, no, I had no idea that anyone would describe me as an alpha. I've never yeah. had that happen before. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are, you know, it's either you or Jim J. Bullock. You know what I'm whoa, 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 whoa. So he's beta. Well, okay, okay. I thought you were saying those are your choices no, of alphas. No, no, I was going to say, if that's an alpha, no, no, I'm saying. if you don't know who Jim J. Bullock is, folks, that's from Too Close for Comfort. And and that analogy like was too close for my comfort, by the way. The grandson to Paul Lynn. Almost my father, Paul Lynn, wrote him letters. That's my man, Paul Lynn. Just watched him in Bewitched. <laughs> Uncle Arthur, hello. Oh, hello. I love that. So that's not alpha. That's beta. That's beta. Okay, so that's that. Yes. So what is alpha to you? What, what does that mean? Alpha to me is a strong male who leads, you know, and isn't cowering down and scared of everything and worried about cancel culture. You don't give a shit about cancel culture. I thought you were going to say worried about cancer. I have no... <laughs> I, fuck cancer. cancer. Culture. Yeah, bring it on. Bring it on. I got, you know, cancel culture, that's... That's a problem. That's an epidemic That's that an needs epi a cure, by the way, like cancer. They should actually have scientists working on a cure for, <laughs> for cancel, cancel culture, culture like they are cancer. Listen, we put trillions of dollars in the cancer cure, still don't have one. We need to put just a couple bucks in the cancel culture. Yes. Right? Yes, You're with yes. me on that, huh? I'm with you on that. Horrible for you. comedians. That's horrible. I mean, you can't even tell a joke. Like, the most innocuous jokes are now getting groans. Don't come to my show and groan. You know, oh, no, like no, come on. No purpose. I, I'd rather the silence than the groan. Absolutely. You know? And they're groaning over the least little stuff. Oh, I know. <laughs> but listen, okay. Uh, let's let's talk about this. Let's talk about cancel culture. Uh, but this is a topic on the show because we're trying to counter the cancel culture by bringing people mm -hmm. light and levity and things like that. But part of light and levity is mm -hmm. also truth telling. So if you're telling the truth on stage, if it's not your truth, why mm -hmm. would you groan? Right. What's your purpose of groaning? Right. Because they right. want to sound like they're woke and they're yeah. hip and happening. By the yeah. way, hip's not a good word anymore. I yeah, was told and, not and to use so it. you're so wrong. First of all, comedy club is a sacred space. Yes, <laughs> you know it saying? is. Yeah. We come in, we're not the type of people who could last in a job that required a human resources department. We're on this stage for a reason. You know, so we, we, don't, we don't have a boss. We are our own boss. And we're here so you can hear our view, not your view. 
our point of view. Exactly. And, and you don't have to agree with our point of view, but just be silent about it. Yeah, you know and you know what? Whatever you do for a living, you can go, I'm not going to boo you or groan you, whatever yeah. you say at your yeah. job. Yeah. This is yeah. this is a sacred spot. You're right. Yeah. You're paying money for this comedian yeah. to take you on a journey together, and we're supposed to be laughing together. Yeah. So leave the groan at home. And lighten up. Right. Lighten up. Yes, there's you no know, reason. It's a joke. <laughs> you know right. what I'm now, if the joke isn't funny, that's the bigger issue. Yeah. <laughs> you know just leave it alone. Appropriate. Just leave it alone. Who right. cares? Just we don't need your alone. opinion. Leave By the way, there's alone. other people that might think it is funny. Oh, yeah. A whole, like everybody it, else is laughing, but the four people groaning. So maybe the problem's you. Yeah, we don't. Yes. <laughs> if you take a ratio, you're out, okay? You're a misfit. Get out. Just get out of the club. We don't want you. Yeah, you know, they and they should have that. They should have rules at the at the at the door. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you're going to have any offense, if you're going to take offense at something, yeah, listen. And you, by the way, I had someone that just wrote to me an email, and that was nice. They wrote me an email, and they said, apparently, I used the R word. I didn't mm -hmm. realize I did mm -hmm. in a special. I guess I don't. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't recall using it. You know what the mm -hmm. R word is? Yeah. What is it? Retard. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and apparently, every, every alphabet has a word we're not supposed to. That's say. right. Every letter in the alphabet we have a word. That's <laughs> that's horrible too. Horrible. By the way, they're just words. They're just words. Because in another language, it means nothing. Right. And we grew up on sticks and stones may break my bones. Oh so yeah. You couldn't come home whining about a word when we were growing up. Yeah, well, N word, and and for you that would be really, you know, obviously it would break a few bones. Yeah. You know, you, and by the way, if you're watching or you you obviously see what I'm talking about, if you're listening, what's your what's your ethnic background? I'm African American, but did, no, wait a minute. I mean, way back. I mean, did you do the 23 and Me? Yeah. Or, yeah and where's I what's your country? Oh, they said Ivory Coast. Oh, you're Ivory Coast. Yeah. I'm Ghana. <laughs> How are you Ghana? Fourteen percent. Fourteen percent Ghana. Yeah. What do you? How much yeah, Ivory I Coast? I think do I you? was like maybe thirty something percent Ivory Coast. Thirty. Yeah. What's the other? Um, <laughs> I had some other, like a bunch of other stuff in smaller increments, you know. Oh, in, in, in other parts of Africa. Yeah. How about any Caucasian -y areas? I had like maybe you got a little Swede in the woodpile at all. <laughs> no, I had. I probably had like nine percent. European, so the numbers were really small. Uh, nine, that's not small. Yeah, Nine's yeah. a pretty, pretty uh, big number. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. I, so let me ask you this: with cancel culture, I would imagine, you know, this isn't a racial thing, but it's mm -hmm. kind of like it seems like the truth. That you would get away with a few more things. Like a primarily white audience mm -hmm. wouldn't really protest you because right. there's an assumption, you know, there's assumptions that are made. But a white guy, oh. Yeah. Oh, they can't wait. People yeah, it's, can't it's wait definitely going to be harder for, as they say, cisgendered white men are going to have. <laughs> whoa, whoa, have, whoa, run that by me again. What yeah, am I now? CIS, cisgender. That means you were, your um, sexuality matches the uh, what you were assigned at birth. I didn't. Wow. I so. feel so unwoke now that I did not know that. <laughs> I really didn't. I still can't even say LGBTQ or whatever the hell it is. I still don't yeah, even have that down. It's up the RSTUV now. <laughs> what? What? No, don't tell me. Are you being serious? It's Please educate few, me. It's a few more letters on the end. QIA. Oh, it's like they added questioning more. Yeah. all this stuff. It, it, it's, it's getting longer. My you know. friend has a they now. <laughs> Born a girl, only know her as a girl, and a they. And then I haven't seen her. It's, is it it? It's sister in a while, and I was thinking, if I run into the sister, do I say, how's your sister? Yeah. Or do I say, how's yeah, your day? I don't know how that because works. Because they is, it just makes you think of multiple people. You know what I'm saying? How's your, <laughs> how's like, your schizophrenic, <laughs> multi-personality <laughs> Yeah, you're like, I was born one, but I'm leaving out here many. Yeah. <laughs> now, now they, they can't be offended by this discussion, because how can you be offended when we're trying to learn? Yeah. We're not saying that it's a bad thing, you're a bad person, mm -mm. but we are trying to learn and adjust, just yeah. like you, whoever you, they are. Yeah. By the way, this really defines, you know, they say, you know, they say. <laughs> <laughs> and they is one person <laughs> now. They, They're like, who, Tina? Yeah, I don't give a shit about what <laughs> Tina says, you know. So, yeah, yeah. You, you're giving people more legitimacy yeah, exactly. than they deserve. Uh, so, they so, told me. They they said it. <laughs> they was John. They, they was just John. <laughs> 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 so people don't understand. We're in a transition period. We're learning a lot in this evolutionary period that we're in. And you have to give people time to grow. Yes. You know how you have a family yes. member, you give them a nickname. 
yeah. they have that nickname their whole life. And then by the time they're 18, they say, I now want to be called my birth name. That's a good point. And so you're like, oh, I'm so, and you keep calling them the nickname yeah. for a few times because you're forgetting. Yeah, of course. And then you're like, oh, okay, he said he didn't want to be called Beanbag anymore. <laughs> you know, he wants to now be called Johnson. I can't call him Bean. Hey, Bean, I mean, John. So there's oh, that transition. Oh, it's a great nickname. I would never period. drop that, Alicia. Never. <laughs> you wouldn't drop Beanbag. No, bean no. Beanbag's a keeper. That'd be, I mean, you've got alliteration. <laughs> you've got a B sound, which is great in comedy. Beanbag. Double B. Yeah, ba- Beanbag. Hey, oh, man. So I would, beanbag. I'd love to meet me a beanbag. I've had every nickname imaginable I've, to myself and friends, and I've never heard beanbag. Is it, is it real? Is it, are you being real? I'm not being real. But You're I'm not? Just, you made I'm, up the beanbag? I made up the beanbag, oh. but I was trying to make an example of that it takes time to stop calling your cousin you the number you call, the name you called him his whole you life. You absolutely right. You, know, you can do it, but it's a process. So all we're saying is allow people to go through the process of, of enlightenment, Mm -hmm. or the process of growth or whatever the process is and try not to be offended as people are trying to, you know, get themselves into this new place. And hashtag them so quickly and just, you know, that's like analyze yourself. No, what kills me is the people going back 20 years of tweets. And oh, trying to that's you. ridiculous. <laughs> who who hasn't evolved in 20 years <laughs> in no, some no way? No kidding. You know, so I'm like, don't go back hey, listen, to people's I old Listen, I come from tweets. a generation, you know, if you listen to your grandmother, yeah. all she knew was the word colored. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's not a, that's not her being, yeah. it, it's all about intention. Yeah. She was saying. And it, it's about error. That's exactly right. But it's you know? about your intention. If you yeah. say something, if you have an intention to hurt people, to make yeah. them separate to any of that, yeah. that's what's. That's what yeah. the key is. My grandmother didn't mean anything by it. Yeah. She's she's not saying let's kill the colored. Right. She's just saying that she's just referencing that was the yeah. that was the, the Negro is there, literally there's something called the United and Negro Americans College Fund. At the right? time said right. colored too and Correct. Negro too. Right. It was the it was the time period. Yes. You know, so yeah. yeah Where'd yeah, you yeah. grow up? I forget. I grew up in Maryland, right outside of DC. Oh. Yeah. Close to Baltimore? No, I'm like 45 minutes from Baltimore. Like Chevy Chase's, right around there. Mm, no, that's probably about 40 minutes away. What? I'm more. I'm closer to Virginia and DC. Okay. That whole Virginia like Arlington DC area. Line. Yeah, closer to Arlington, like right across the line from Arlington. Oh, okay. Right across the line from uh, DC. Now, yeah, did you grow DC. up? Uh, what was the economic status of your parents and the way you grew up? Yeah, we grew up actually where I grew up in Prince George's County, Maryland. That's oh. the uh, the county that has the highest wealth for African Americans. Uh, most African Americans in PG County have at least a bachelor's degree. Is that where you the know. basketball players come from? Is yeah, like PG a high County. School there? Yeah, it's called, they had a, 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 a documentary on yes. Showtime called yes. In the Water. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, so that's, that's the area. So, so you grew um, up in that area. Yeah, yeah, where everybody, everybody's parents had good jobs wow. and made good money. <laughs> so we didn't have um, we didn't have the financial woes. Like, my parents were able to write checks for me to go to college. I didn't mm. have to take out loans. But Where'd my you go mother, to school? I went to University of Maryland College Park. My mother graduated from Howard University. Right. You know, my father owned his DC. own business. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so my mother had a good job since she, you know, she worked since she was 18. Yeah. You know, so, um, so yeah, so the jobs were plentiful at that time. And PG County had a lot of African-American two-parent households, doctors, lawyers. That's why when the um, Cosby show came out and people were like, oh, this is fictitious. That wasn't fictitious if you wow. grew up in Maryland and D.C. Right. You know, my father, his parents, uh, they raised him in D.C. And at that time, most of the houses were black doctors and lawyers, and they lived in the same neighborhood because mm-hmm. of segregation. They couldn't really live anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And um, so it wasn't, it wasn't a lot of Ph.D.s. It wasn't unheard of if you came from that environment of people with degrees and advanced degrees. Um, and you became a comedian. I'm sure they're ashamed of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, my mother did not want me to be a comedian. Oh, right. Oh, I'm serious. Oh, that, that, <laughs> yeah, she has so many, yeah. um, you know, they think of, like, Lady Sings the Blues. They think of late night <laughs> heroin. You know, they think of uh, drinking because the clubs provide drinks. They think of uh, nothing good. They don't think anything yeah, good well, about right. a late they're, night they're, job. They're, they're right about it. You know, so then, the, oh, my mother would call me and be like, get out of those clubs because of the secondhand smoke. Oh. You know, there's well, people like then, Kathy they... Griffin now has stage one lung cancer. She never smoked. Do you think that's from secondhand smoke? I think it's from the Smoky Clubs. Uh, remember really? Christopher Reeves' wife? Sure. She was a lounge singer. Never smoked. 
No. She's singing and lounging. Everybody puffing. Secondhand. But it's been uh, smoke years. And cancer, it's and been she years away. though since uh, th- there was smoking in clubs, right? Yeah. Maybe not that long. Not not too long, but I don't know how the da- you know how the damage is done. Yeah. You know, in the um, how like if carcinogens just sit in your system for a while, but mm. people that have never smoked coming up with lung cancer. My that's, friend died that's of it. Didn't, but actually, yeah. he smoked a long time ago, but not much. Yeah. yeah he died of lung cancer. Yeah. And you just don't yeah. know. Yeah. We we still yeah. don't know where cancers come from. It's we don't. it's got to be the environment though. We don't. And uh, we do yeah. know that the environment has so much toxicity to it. Yeah. Now, the one thing that pisses yeah. me off about you that mm-hmm. I have to share with you mm-hmm. is the 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 young looking thing. That's really like it's almost like to the point of you're disgusting i almost feel like the way i do about brad pitt there should be a law because i know if i've known you since 98 you have to be a certain age yeah i'm up there and you are pissing I'm me off i'm at least 72 you, uh, <laughs> you are unbelievable with this skin of yours do you do something to it do you have any you tips at least you want to share? Yeah, what I do is I scrub my face every night, but then I also use this thing called, they call it an astringent. And that's that supposed is. to get all the, any kind of, any kind of particles I love that you use your the skin. term they call it that. Yeah, that, that's just one again. person. That's John. <laughs> that's just one person, John, <laughs> came up with this thing called they, astringent. Of course, they, it, yeah. it's got alcohol in it. <laughs> yeah, I, I use that with a pad. I put a pad on. I use the astringent. And, um, yeah, I try to do that. Uh, I try to do it every night. We're we're getting health tips yeah. and <laughs> young tips and comedy from Alicia Cooper. This is fantastic. Well, you know, obviously some of it's hereditary. Like your mom probably looks young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My great grandmother died at ninety two, and she looked great. You A know, great grandmother. My great grandmother. You know, um, remember the Jeffersons? Of course. Remember the lady who played Mother Jefferson? Mm-hmm. That's how my great grandmother looked. Oh, I thought you were going to say that was her. Oh, uh, it, it, they 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 had a lot. They it could have been her. Did like they, they yeah, they uh, they hold on. They hold on. It, so <laughs> so you've been at comedy for at least 27 years? No, I started comedy in October 2000. I tried comedy whoa, prior to whoa, that and whoa. couldn't do it. How in the world am I confused by this? That I met you in 98. Well, cuz I was working in the production side of Magic Johnson's talk show. I, was, I thought I was you were also in the a, creative. No, I was considered a writer's assistant. I right. worked in the writer's room with the writers. Right. I had a lowly writer's assistant position. On the oh, show. but writer's assistants are writers, but also usually comics. Yeah, but mm-mm. no, I was more of the stenographer where you take <laughs> notes for what the That's writers what the are coming up with. That's what the assistants do, yeah. Yeah. But I worked on, uh, I was a writer on Fuller House, and the assistants always Kept growing up in the ranks where they became. Yeah, yeah. and you, know, you got to get in so that you get you those get promotions. Yeah. And I would have gotten promotions in that job had it lasted. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the magic minute. Right. Yeah, quite, quite a I show. I was on my way. Yeah. Now, <laughs> here you are, brand new in California. Yes. How did you get the job on, on this talk show? If you haven't, if anyone doesn't know about this, I was the original co-host on the, on the Magic Johnson show. That's how me and Alicia met. And um, <laughs> so... It was not the best introduction to Hollywood, shall we say? I mean, they had some pretty big talent. Oh yeah, you know, like producer wise, that yeah. had yeah. you know Todd Yasui. It was yeah. a great producer, and yeah, they had Marilyn Gill. She was, uh, I think, she was like a supervising producer. She was the executive producer of Rolanda. Mm-hmm. You know, so they had they had some talent in in that in that group. So you then. now this is. For something, somebody to hear if they're thinking about moving to Hollywood or if they have a daughter or son maybe that wants to move out here. Mm-hmm. That's what you have to Don't do. Don't do it. You, <laughs> you paid your dues <laughs> by being an assistant, yeah. basically a you yeah. know court stenographer for yeah. the people. Tell us how that works. It's a pitching session and it's yeah, so you pitching sit ideas in the and jokes. Room. Yep, they're pitching ideas. They're pitching jokes. You're typing the stuff up. They're just, you know... Are you commenting at all? Because our people would do that now and then. You know what? No, house. not on that show because it was so new. Mm-hmm. You know, now had the show lasted and everybody was comfortable with everybody else because sure. you become a family, yeah. then yeah, you can just let her rip, just start pitching, start throwing stuff out. And in the beginning, to me, it felt a little competitive in the writer's room well, because all... everybody was trying to yep. Um, yep. prove themselves yep. and keep their spot if it were wow. to continue on. You are saying exactly so, what. Yeah. It's ex- 
you know, yeah. it, it goes on in these writer's rooms. It's, yeah. it's horrible. Yeah. I heard Everybody Loves Raymond was the exception. Wow, they that's would go, a good show. They would go, but it would yeah. end up being not only a great show with all professionals, great, yeah. amazing actors, like iconic actors, yes. but the writing for uh, yeah. Phil Rosenthal was the showrunner. Yeah. And apparently he would have the writers home by six o'clock so they could be with their families. That's a so well add that machine. to it. Yeah. yeah, add that to it. But they had didn't have the competition. Yeah. Writers lasted forever. They all had producer positions eventually. Yeah. And it's quite quite a yeah. an anomaly, though, because usually what you said is true. Yeah. They will literally snip at you and bite at you when you're pitching jokes. I had somebody that came at me, mm-hmm. like, on a, on a joke, mm-hmm. and and – and like gave me the look at her, and literally the joke ended up in the script from them. Oh, they getting credit. Twenty for minutes later, <laughs> that's what so, so, I couldn't yeah. even believe it. And yeah. you can't say anything if you're no. like a lower Too level low. writer. You yeah. can't say anything. Can't say anything. And what I've learned because I've worked on a lot of shows over the years is that the crap rolls down from the top. If the showrunner Phil Rosenthal is cool. Everything underneath is And then cool. also a fish rots from the head down, too. Yeah. So if yeah. it's and a if the rotten top fish. is rotten, whew. it's a rotten environment. Yes. That so, was not a good uh, environment. Yeah, I worked on a sitcom, and the lady at the top was so awesome, everything was awesome. What show was that? <laughs> it's a sitcom called The Parkers. It was on a network called UPN. UPN it was a yeah, spinoff of it. Moesha. Yeah. And um, what did you Sarah do on Finney that? Johnson. I was. It was called a writer's trainee. It was a the WGA had a program where you could get it paid every week for twenty six weeks to sit in the writer's room and learn the craft. Wow. So I mean, of course, you had to submit, and I submitted my spec script was Everybody Loves Raymond. No, because that was one of my favorite shows. His family wow. reminds me of my father's side, and my father even has a brother named Robert. So, like, I just loved uh, Everybody Loves Raymond. Everybody yeah. Loves Raymond. <laughs> Everybody Loves Raymond. Brad and I've worked with Brad. I've worked By at, the way, at his, a club in the MGM. Oh, yes. He yeah. has his own club he in Vegas. His, club his in daughter Vegas. went to the prom with my son, by the way. What? Isn't that crazy? This is I a small I should show you a world. picture. Yes. Yeah. And by the yeah. way, he was friends with her and friends with Brad's son for a year or maybe more before they even found out what the parents, <laughs> that the parents were friends Comedian friends. Isn't that crazy? And that is crazy. Like, that he happens to go, yeah, my dad's a comic. Oh, my dad's a comic. Who's your Brad? Oh, Who's Brad your Garrett's dad? my dad. Who's your dad? My dad, Craig you know, Schumacher. Schumacher. Yeah. Who the hell's that? But anyway. Uh, <laughs> they knew. It, isn't that crazy, though, that yeah. they ended up together? And, yeah. and but, but that tells you how kids don't communicate like we did. Mm-mm. Imagine Mm-mm. you growing up that you didn't know what your friend's parents did. Yeah. We all knew what our friend's parents, we knew our yeah. friend's parents. Well, that's because our parents were nosy and they wanted to know what they did before you can go play with them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. gotta, you got to have the parent resume yes. submitted. <laughs> you can't otherwise just go they, to anybody's other, Otherwise they assume serial killer, they're, they've got bodies in the basement. Yeah, you've got to submit that. Yeah. Then they, they yeah. end up hanging out as well. Yeah. Do you yeah. still yeah. stay in touch with your friends from back east? Oh, yeah, I have the same friends from kindergarten. Wow, me too. My accountant. We're on a group text. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so yeah. So when you go back, uh, yeah. do they pack the house? Like when you perform, where do you yeah, perform back? Yeah. Back in your area. Well, we Arlington don't have a Draft whole house? lot of. Um, I don't. I don't know if I worked there. It may have been one time. We don't have a whole lot of clubs in DC with the DC Improv, and right. I've worked there a few times. And when I have worked there, my family shown up. They had a club that it was. Oh, it was so nice. It was called the Riot Act. Yeah. And this club seated 400 people. It was pandemonium when this club opened. And they used mm. to book me a lot as the feature. But I got to open for some of the biggest things. I got to open for Dick Gregory. <gasps> and the same, like, wow. the next week I opened for Paul Mooney. There's like, a documentary coming out, by the way, about Dick Gregory. Did yes. You know about well, yeah. I just saw one on him. Oh, so it is out. Yeah, I think it's out already. Yeah, I did lights phenomenal. for him in college. It was you so did? Cool. Yeah. You know what he used to he used to do is he he would have people um, like uh, test his food to see if it was poisoned. Oh, because yeah. he felt like people were after. Him. Oh, absolutely, and they probably were. So you're just supposed to die <laughs> if it was meant for him. Yeah, yeah. I had to be. I had to. I had to have a bite of his apple before he did. It's like a Caesar thing. <laughs> so if you eat some food that was meant to kill him and it kills you, does he pay your family <laughs> for the dead relative? No, the college does. You know, the college takes care. <laughs> so, Sounds like a lawsuit yeah, waiting to happen. Oh yeah, but no, no, he would literally. He would not eat the. Food food that we gave them until somebody <laughs> tested it. Yeah. 
But so Dick Gregory opened for him. You opened for Paul Mooney. Mooney. Yeah, I mean, and 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 when they would come to town to D.C., a lot of the biggest dignitaries and politicians would be in the audience. Mm-hmm. I met um, the ex Senator William Cohen mm-hmm. and his wife Janet. Langhart Cohen, like you would look in the audience, it would be like, wow, this person's in the audience. It was, it was a great experience, but the club didn't last that long. And I think it has something to do with somebody was stealing money or something. Oh, yeah. Because the money was there. That happens a lot. The first comedy. night, it was so many people there that the computer crashed from all the orders and everything. It, was, it couldn't handle the amount of, of, of orders they were getting. Yeah. And the club was beautiful and it lasted maybe six months. Wow. But you got yeah. to work there a few times. I got to work there now, a few I times. Now, I would propose this to you that I will, uh, if, if I'm not, if if you're not too big, you could open for me. In, I would in, love that. In Arlington. I would love that. Let's do the Arlington. I just yes. got an offer, Arlington Draft House. Yes, and then my friends from high school and elementary school can come. Exactly. I yes. want to meet them. <laughs> yes, I wanna meet they, they want to meet friends. you. I don't think that's true. <laughs> Although, if they like alphas, I guess I'm for they them. They love alphas. They love alphas. Now, your husband is an alpha. Yes. Uh, he's got to be because yes. you're really committed to that. <laughs> what, what does he do for a living? He's uh, in accounting. Have you heard of Well, you've heard of this place when I tell it to you. You're going to know. Cast and crew. There's only two places that really pay us. Entertainment Paychecks. partners are cast and crew. He's so. the accountant for cast and crew? Right. Can you tell him to get me a little more money on my check from <laughs> um, Matlock and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? My last check... <laughs> From Fresh Pins, I think, was 18 cents. <laughs> well, bad news in the commercials department. Do you have <laughs> oh. any old commercials you need no. residuals from? <laughs> no, I didn't do enough commercials. Do you Do you get residual checks from these? I do. I just shows? got one today. I got a big one. No. I, I did some voices for Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. And, the um, Spider-Man? Yeah, the, late, the latest one that came with Miles Morales. Wait, wait a minute. You did voices for it? Yeah, like it's, crowd, it's called additional voices. Crowd voices? Yeah, yeah like additional ADR. voices. Yeah. So I went in to Sony and I did the voices, but yeah, those pay that, that, that pays pretty good. Do you ad lib those things? Do you No. Like they, they say here make some crowd noise and go, Spider Man, mm, what's up? No, everything was already script this is my first time doing something they at that script, level. And yeah, so they, what happens they, they is you get background sounds. Yeah, well it's 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 they have it like they name it as a character like it might say police officer so it's a character and then so you stand in front of this easel and the executive producers in the room and the it's another person working the board and then across from you is the sound guy and you're in this enclosed area and you're standing in front of an easel and you have all these sheets of paper in front of you and so they'll tell you read it and I mean you you actually start sweating like it's pretty intense so um, you'll read it one way and they'll say okay read that again but read it faster and then you'll read it fast and they'll say read it again but read it angrier and then you'll read it angry read it again but read it like like you're smiling you know so they give the you editor all these choices right and yeah. then they're snatching pages and replacing pages and then go and then you're going again and it might be a different character so mm. I did like a police dispatcher I did some people running through the graveyard are you you matching know. lips with people? No, it's just Nothing you. Nothing like that. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. It's like it's like these background voices because they're yeah. crowds and things yes. like that. Yes. It's so just if you're like watching that. a boxing match or like I right. remember there's a Spider Man, yeah. he was in a ring. Yeah. Because it's, all it's the people that are around voices. the ring. Yeah, got right. it. Yeah. So um yeah, Could it, you it, hear it your trip. voice? Yeah, I can you hear did? me. Yeah. <laughs> One I can hear me through the police dispatch. Matter of fact, when the movie came out, I took I clipped that and I would put it on. I think I put it on my Instagram or something. And some people who know me really well, they're like, We heard you, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> But yes, yeah, so it was a few different scenes that you could hear me as a as an additional voice. How do you get a gig like this? My manager got me the was it did I yes I auditioned. My manager got me the audition, and I went into a voiceover studio in Burbank, and I I read in this studio in Burbank. You and auditioned I to play additional voices. Yeah, I you auditioned. I never heard. Of, I've been in Hollywood a long time and never heard of this. Yeah, well, I didn't audition. I'm to liking play. this. Can, can my wife do this and me? <laughs> I yeah. need extra money. Yeah, I auditioned to play a, a particular school teacher. Uh huh. And I think what happened was they just didn't use me for that. They used me for something else. A bunch of things. Yeah. This so. And yeah. So angry I, I didn't woman get the number two and that stuff like that. For. But I think what helped because you know you can do stuff in the house with your Zoom or you know you mm. can try to. I invested by going into a professional studio, and I think that helped my audition sound mm-hmm. better. And then, yeah, so after my manager got me the audition and I went and paid money into this studio and he sent it off, they selected me. And in that room, it was like five or six of us in the waiting area at Sony. 
and we went in one at a time, and everybody had different things to read. Really? Yeah. But these were, were these finalists, and you were against them, or they? No, just... they have been. They had been hired too. Really? Yes, yeah, so we were all friends at that point. So we started it's a whole exchanging other career. Notes. I mean, it's you a can make a career. career out of that. This one lady that I talked to, she said she had been doing this over twenty years, and that she had a a booth in her home in Texas. You know, yeah. but she came in here to Sony to do this. But she said that she's been doing voiceover work for years. Wow. Yeah, she constructed a booth in her house. And she said, when I'm here, what I do is I go into a closet and I just shut the closet door. And, you know, she insulates herself in a closet. Oh, yeah, the in insulation LA. is your clothes. Yeah. I've done that before. Yeah, the clothes were her, in, her insulation. So, you know, so we talked until we got called back in the back to actually do work. But it was intense. Now, are you doing stand up on the road right now? Are you doing in in smoky clubs? <laughs> no, oh, thank I mean, goodness they can't smoke in. But yeah. I just got back from the Bay Area um, Sunday. The Alameda gig. Alameda. I did them Friday night and Saturday night, and I haven't really been on the road in a while because I've been fortunate enough to work. I'm you know a regular at the comedy store, so I'm usually at the comedy store on Friday or Saturday. Yeah. You know, so I usually just go down to the comedy store and go home. Good thing the accountant's making some money because there's, no, there's <laughs> no money in the comedy store. For is there? Yeah, they they pay now. Yeah, no. What it is is this is the thing. If you're in the main room, okay. what they've been doing for years in the main room is you get a percentage of the door. Oh, and, and they're the packing percentage it of the, these days. and they're packing it, so the percentage of the door is good. Okay, so you have to hope that they have like big headliners, which they do now. Yeah. Oh, yes. Always. Yeah. Yeah. They always have somebody on it. Like Mark Maron's been on there. Mm -hmm. You know, on the lineup with me the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, they'll have uh, Eliza Schlesinger who mm -hmm. won a season of Last Comic Standing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they'll have some. They'll have some people on there that people re recognize. Right. So, um, and you know, Joe Rogan, he left and sure. started his club in Austin, Texas. So he That's used to be on the lineup. So it seats 400. And I have to tell you, on the weekends, they're, they oh, get yeah. 400. Whoa. You yeah. know what they're, they're out Especially the door. post COVID because right. nobody wants to sit in the house anymore. Yeah. I mean, I found both. I mean, I've just had a gig canceled because. People are still paranoid because of the COVID thing, being in crowds. But I also get the opposite. I go on the road and people are going, hey, God, you're here. It's almost like, you know, we're yes. medicine people. Yes, and they're laughing much better now. I agree. I it's mean, a different yeah, level. It's a different level. of Everybody's happy right now. Well, it's also you know? a release and yeah. a relief. It's literally yeah. a relief and a release. Yeah. That people are just, it's just, it's so much more significant, the, yeah. the passion and power of the laughter. Yeah. Because they're just going, oh, my God, I've got to do something besides I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Anything. I'm gonna poison my my spouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and you can take more chances with your comedy because people don't really care what you say as much. Like the the cancel group has really calmed down. Like, I think they sat in the house are. isolated and they're like, I'm not saying shit when I get out of this house. I'm just gonna be happy to be out. I have news for the cancel culture people and the virtue signalers that have to yeah. say, Oh, I'm so virtuous and I'm part of the woke culture. I have news for you. You will now be shamed. You think yes. you're going to shame us? Oh, yeah. no. People yeah. don't want to hear from you anymore. Yeah, we're going to turn this audience on you. I was wondering who the <laughs> captain of these people are. You know what I mean? Me too. Who's leading this group of, mm -hmm. you know, all of the, that's going on right now? Who is in charge? And I think it's somebody that's, like, laughing when they get home. Like, I told them not to say midget, and they're really doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbasses. <laughs> yes. They're going to cancel your ass now for the, using the M word. <laughs> but you know what? People that qualify in that category, I never heard them complain about that word. It was tall people trying to sow division that started that. I've never heard Maybe, one person Maybe, but my friend is a little person. She'll be on this show soon because she's my neighbor. She's and an she actress. says she doesn't like the M word? Yeah, she did. I she, remember but her telling me that. she prefers little people? Which I think is ridiculous. That's even worse. I agree. I'm going to talk to her about that when she's on my show because uh, uh, you got to pick another one. Yeah. Little people isn't it. Like that make doesn't up even sound make like up you're an adult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, think, you know what I think of? Gulliver's Travels. I think of Lilliputians. <laughs> right. Like, uh, these are little people. I think the M word was better. Like ah. if you're going to replace it, replace it with something better. By the way. Little people is not it. It's a nice. It, uh, there's some words that are good words. You know the R word? Yeah. I, I think it's a good word. And by yeah. the way, in music, it means retard. Yeah. Retard is yeah. slow. Yeah. Okay? And yeah. by the way, in Boston, they can get away with anything with that accent. Yeah, you fucking true. retard. You don't know what they're saying. 
<laughs> there's, there's some re, there's some way with their anger that they get away with it. It's like okay, it's all right if they say it. Even the wokes are going all right if it's a guy that grew up, uh, you know, in comedy clubs in Faneuil Hall doing the doing the R word. It's all, it's all right, but everybody else you can't say. It. Philadelphia they say it horribly. So it should be illegal in Philadelphia. Yeah, I just there's no nuance to why people are angry with the word. Now, if you're talking to somebody who really has the condition, it's right. mean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But if you're talking to some dude from Poughkeepsie, you know what I'm saying? I just don't. Yeah, I, yeah, I just. I, it's debatable because here's here's a thought I had when this person came to me and said, don't use the R word. And I don't remember doing it anyway because I thought I dropped it. You know, again, you know, learning yeah. along the way. But what I said, I, I do talk about the short bus. Mm -hmm. I have talked about that. Yeah. Window liquors. Yeah. You know, I was on the short bus, I, literally. I, I snuck my way on. But anyways, <laughs> you know why I was on the short bus? Why? Because I was jealous of this. Remember the safety patrol? Did you have that growing up? Yeah, I think I was one of them. They had the orange. The, 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 yeah, the, the, yeah, the orange belt. Yeah, it looked like a bandito. Yeah, you know, oh, we, we lived to get that belt. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I was so jealous and because they got to go to a baseball game for free on safety patrol night. <laughs> and I had no – we were poor growing up, and I had no way to get to the game except for get in the safety patrol. Yeah. So I got a job as a safety on a short bus. So that's how I got it. And you got into that event? Yeah. Plus I <laughs> snuck my way into the short bus – in a special <laughs> class because I didn't want to uh, be – during swim season, you had to be naked in the locker room. You had to wear skinny little things. And I had no pubic hair. I was embarrassed by it. So I pretended I had problems, and they put me with the short bus people. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Okay. I had to con You didn't know what way. was going on in that locker room when you got naked. You didn't know if Jim J. Bullock was going to show up. <laughs> wasn't that. I was so embarrassed. I have no pubic hair. Back then, you wanted it. One of the manscaping it was a sign up. That was an alpha sign. Was an You're alpha. a man. Yeah. You had a bush. Big hairy pubes. Yes. When I was a kid, we used to, when I was younger and sort of started late, me and my buddy, we went for women with giant bushes. You should have taken a Sharpie and just drew some pubes on. <laughs> no. I, believe me, I, I actually put seaweed down there one time. The, I had a bathing suit that was very skimpy. I, I, I thought that the women, I actually thought this is how self obsessed you can be. I actually thought the girls were looking for that. Like if you saw, if they saw a little, oh, he's a man. Mm -hmm. I had nothing. Yeah. 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 yeah so yeah, yeah. I put, yeah, I did, I did that one time. I put seaweed there. It was yeah. sticking out to yeah. make it look but like But see, a, it helps you be creative too. If everything's handed to you in life and everything uh, comes too easily, you're not creative. I and you have no critical thinking skills. You're working on your critical thinking skills right there. Thank you for that. I should have you around. You're better than a therapist. Yeah, yeah. The way you turn things around to make them positive. Got to. Are your parents positive? They pass that on oh, to you? Oh, yeah. yeah well, my, not, not my dad so much, but my mother. Uh, is, you know, she's my mother's the oldest of nine, and my father is uh, in the middle of six. But, yeah, my mother could turn some stuff around. And my dad, my dad is funny though, because he can go from his temper can go from zero to sixty in one second. Oh yeah. Like my mother, her fuse goes forever. My father's doesn't. I'm in the middle. Mm -hmm. you know what yeah. I'm sure, you got a little so, bit of both. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Even height. My mother's short. My father's taller. I'm in the middle. <laughs> so um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, but yeah, you you got to try to find the positives where you can because there's so much BS going on nowadays. I mean. Yeah. Ooh, it's a lot of BS going on. Everybody's trying to divide us, you know. It's we're Why in the world are we trying to do, – do you have this theory that we're all one on the planet? Yeah. That we are absolutely. literally all one. Absolutely. There's like a oneness that we can achieve. But if we, if we really came together, we'd be powerful beyond measure. Beyond measure. <laughs> we would <laughs> probably be going flying to other planets oh. like they are with us. Yeah. I'll bet you yeah. aliens yeah. in, in – Flying saucers mm -hmm. are probably a, from a planet of one that they did evolve to that. Mm -hmm. They stopped dividing yeah. and they said, this is the way to come together as one. Mm -hmm. So now you got all the geniuses, yeah. all the great loves of the world, all the great people, the humanists, the, the people of service. They all come together mm -hmm. for one good common cause. Yeah. How cool would that be? be I awesome. don't think people realize. I think that it disappoints me when comics are not one. Yeah. When we knock one another, it's stupid. Yeah. You know, there's just yeah. no purpose in it. Yeah. 
I, you know, I had a guy knocking me on this podcast. I, I actually approached him. I said, what the, what the fuck is wrong with you? You have any other topics? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was like a stupid topic. It's like somebody says, oh, these dudes shading you and all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I looked it up, and I was like, what in the world? Mm-hmm. Like, if was all it the somebody topics, you even knew? Yeah, I know him a little bit. Okay. So I ran into him a few weeks ago. <laughs> I, I think he was, like, <laughs> taken aback. And I talked to the friend that he was on this podcast of this famous guy who's got a great podcast. Mm-hmm. And the guy says to me, I said, what was he saying? He goes, he's a cunt. <laughs> That's what he <laughs> says to me. So I told the guy when I saw him, I go, you know the guys who show you wrong? He said you're a cunt. He goes, yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> but see, the fact that you said that to him, that's the alpha in you. You did oh. not back down. You no. let him know that he was not, what he did was not cool. Right. You know. Right. That, now, that, most that, people, that's I guess, attractive. betas, you just got turned on, didn't you? <laughs> Got to change my drawers, everybody. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> Glad because I wear the pants. I acted alpha, and it gets you a little, oh, as my sexy. grandmother would say, moist. It's sexy. Oh, because, wow. you know, anybody else, a beta, would run from it and complain wow. to his friends. And, right. You know, but would never let the guy know yeah. that, they, that it pissed him off. Interesting. Never let the guy know somebody called him a cunt. Now, a lot of people, or that I called him something, I, I actually said to him, I confronted him, I said, what's wrong with you? Like, that you would do that. We have tons of material. Why knock one another? Right. What's the point of that? It just doesn't make any sense. And you see comics do it when they get together. Yeah. It's so catty and petty. But they, to me, they just seem unhappy. That's the one thing you about know. comics that I'm a yeah. little disappointed in. Yeah. Do you know, I got to be honest, though, now that I think of it, I've had, you're probably my... 25th guest, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Every one of them, we jive. We, you know, I mean, there's a good vibration. Not to be Beach Boys about it, but to, <laughs> I mean, there's a connection and a resonance that says, yeah, we are one and we're on this, we're doing this together. And there is, like you were saying, there's bigger laughs now. Mm-hmm. I also think there's bigger camaraderie going on. I think so too. Yeah, because now when you see your comedy comrades, you're like, hey, hey. I haven't seen you in a year and a half. It's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's like, like we're hugging. Yeah. You know, I was going to say it's, it's like crazy. you've been in quarantine, and we yeah. were in quarantine. Yeah, but that's what it's. Yeah. Yes, yeah. there is some sort of like um, yeah. we got out of prison. We made, and it. now we're able to. I say on stage now. I say uh, you know they want us to now start putting masks on and going back to a way that we had you know gotten away from. And I said I'm not going back. I've tasted freedom. I don't know how the hell Harriet Tubman did it. I'm <laughs> safe. The rest of y'all better save yourself. Uh, by the way, folks, if you're watching us on YouTube, I saved Alicia <laughs> before the show, just before we were about to go. Hey, welcome to Enlightened Up. You had a damn mask around. It was a chin strap. Yeah. I guess you didn't feel it. I did. And I said, you know that that's on you. I was like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Thank the God. little blue one that the, just the, hangs down yes, around Yes, you had a full-on Yeah, chin because strap. you never know how other people perceive. You know, like like and, I'm coming uh, into a new environment, right. and the people might be like, where's her mask? And then you might come in some environment, they're like, I don't care if you have one on or not. It's respectful. It's nice. <laughs> but, but I agree with you. It's like. I'm hugging people. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. You know, if it's your time, it's your time. Yeah. And I'm and, and, and you can look this up. You can Google this. But I have O positive blood. Mm-hmm. And um, they said that people with O blood, it's not that they don't get it. Mm. They just get it the least mm. than the other blood types. And I said that makes sense because when, you're, when you donate blood as an O, mm. you can donate to all the other types. That's the most popular type, right? Yeah, that's the most popular. Yeah. And it's and it like A can only donate to or A B can only donate mm-hmm. to other A B. O mm-hmm. can donate to everybody. So oh, you can't us. wipe us out fast. <laughs> y- y'all need us. <laughs> I wonder if it has anything to do with the immune system too. I might, because you know they have, you have whole a, you books. Have a, you have like, a good immune system, don't you? It could be better. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like I, I have That's asthma, you know. You do? So yeah, I've had asthma since I was six months old. Because I was a preemie. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. My son was a premium. I had a little bit of asthma. Yeah, yeah. Your lungs are really underdeveloped. This is usually they have sports a, induced. Is yours induced yeah. by Yeah, it gets worse activity. by activities and stuff. And, you know, so I would always have, I would have medications or I would have my inhaler. But as you get older and your lungs get better, you don't have to have it as, you know, you don't need it the same way you did when you were a child. Here's a question that you've never been asked, I hope. And I hope never to ask this question again. I know it's the first time ever. <laughs> Have you ever had an asthma attack during an orgasm? <laughs> Only an alpha would ask you that question. I obviously have not had sex that good. <laughs> I would like. 
to have an asthma attack <laughs> during an orgasm. Come would on, love it. Alpha. I would welcome Six it. Six years married, get busy over here. That would, to me, I would look that as an achievement. If my wife told me she had asthma, I would literally put it on my competitive alpha list and say, I'm going to have her, I'm going to have an inhaler right here. And if she reaches for the inhaler, I've done my job. Because you can't fake it. You can fake an orgasm. You can't fake an asthma attack. And if she turns blue. <laughs> Good for me. Good for you. I am a stud. I am the true love master if I can turn true her blue from an asthma attack. But unfortunately, my wife has perfect lungs and doesn't have any asthma. I'm pissed now. I'm actually going to ask her to go get some asthma so yeah. I know that I'm achieving something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that 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 would be the test. <laughs> but so what do you, you think do you, now yeah. about um, how everything now everybody's using their phone to record everything? Oh. You know, like you can't get away with oh. anything today because everything is caught on tape. Well, you know what uh, Chappelle does, right? What Chappelle actually? Oh, look at this. There's an inhaler. Ah, I guess you have I asthma. Survive. You have asthma. Have you ever had? Have you ever had an asthma attack during an orgasm? orgasm? <laughs> <laughs> no, he says no. <laughs> well, you need to. He would have, like to. Yeah. <laughs> Gordon, our producer, is isn't your lover here? I want to talk to your lover <laughs> and say you you've got some work to do. You've got some work to do because if you're not causing an asthma attack, and if you have, <laughs> I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna ask my wife if she has any disorders that she have any sort of like. That she could have an anaphylactic, whatever you call it, attack, or <laughs> does she have any allergies that I can cause some sort of reaction? Does she have hypoglycemia, yeah, exactly. anything. Exactly. <laughs> Here's your sugar rush, baby. Sciatica. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Sciatica. It's not contagious. I won't get it. That's exactly. fantastic. I think that the immune systems in our, this country are so compromised. Yeah asthma and allergies and yeah. you know but i just think that we need to work more on laughter to feel better and really combat whatever is out there yeah you know have a good immune system yeah so 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 do you get um sick uh, not not like i used to as a kid um really no. Yeah, I don't got, well, you know, right now I still, I'll take, um, I keep my inhaler on an as needed basis like Gordon mm -hmm. and um, I can take a pill, um, you know, that helps with your lung capacity if I feel like I need some additional help. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, no, I mean, because LA has so little humidity, it, it works better with my condition. Oh. DC and Maryland and all that stuff is very humid. Really? You know, so, so that affects your lungs. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I never was really an allergy guy. I actually don't get sick. It's been 20 oh, years since I missed a day of work. That's alpha right there. But I'm, <laughs> I'm so Beta alpha. Beta is always sick. <laughs> I had no idea I was alpha. My, my kids and wife are always trying to come up with diagnoses for me. Okay. Yes. And I'm going to give them this one. Yeah. I had another podcast I was on. They said that I'm um, Asperger's. <laughs> Which I thought was ass burgers, by the way, it's burgers. Your but anyway, pee. it's it's got a P. Yeah, but whatever yeah. it is, that's what they attribute the alpha to because I have no filter. Ah, so they say, oh, there yeah, it goes. But you're not ass burgers. Ass burgers is like somebody know? that's really good at just one thing. Like they hone in on one thing, and that's the thing that's almost like Rain Man. You know, you, you you're not that. I'm good at one thing, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Give you an asthma attack. <laughs> the love master. Come on now. I'm oh, good at Asperger's in the bedroom. <laughs> I'm Asperger's in the bedroom. <laughs> I'm gonna tell my wife that. Yeah, I'm hamburgers in the bedroom. <laughs> That's right. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Can that, you but. believe are you you are you're not a vegan, are you? No. Yeah, i I'm I, 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 hats off to the vegans. I try you know what? It's mm. funny you should say that. My this is a true story. I did gain a bunch of weight and my wife told me, you know, she cut me off. She's having hormone issues and all that. Mm -hmm. She said, I'll have sex with you if you lose 20 pounds. <laughs> and now you want to motivate a man who hasn't had sex in a very long time. That's yes. Okay. Give him that. Give him that. So I started to, I put vegan butter on my cord last night. I think it's a start. Yeah. You know, so I am going to. Vegan gonna, mayo, all that stuff. I, yeah. it, the yeah. things that I can do as yeah. vegan, I will I will start to yeah. do that. Because yeah. dairy, I think dairy's not so good. 
Yeah, I, was, I just started drinking the um, almond milk. Yeah, true. Yeah. That's what I put on my cereal. Yeah, it doesn't taste anything like milk, but, you know. It's okay. Yeah, it's looks, like, I, 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 it's, look, you, you can disguise anything. Yeah. You know, to me, the problem with vegan is I need a texture, like meat. Yeah. Like, let's say you, by the way, there is a great, now Beyond Burger is phenomenal. By yeah, the way. my cousin but turned it, me it's, on it's that. It's the way I dress it, though. I put fried onion, grilled onions, right? Yeah. And I put tomato sauce on. I make a little pizza burger out of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I'll use vegan cheese. You turn your Beyond Burger into an In-N-Out Burger. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I want to turn it into, because yeah, you know that you know that kind of meat doesn't matter, but a steak. Yeah. You cannot replace a steak. You can't fake a steak. No, you can't fake the steak. You know, even in Hollywood, they can't fake a steak. <laughs> so I have to have. Do you like a, ste- a good steak? Yeah, like oh, a Mastro's or yeah. Ruth's Chris. Ruth's Chris or something. Yeah, the sizzling Morton's. Plate. Morton's. Morton's. I just excellent. went there recently. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't fake that. I went to Morton's recently, mm-hmm. and we're, I was with a guy from out of town, and mm-hmm. we were talking business and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was, I thought, where can we go? And, and, and you know, I looked in a thing. Oh, Morton's is nearby, mm-hmm. and I actually chose it because I thought he was buying. <laughs> And then I did one of these. Oh, then the bill comes, and I pull the credit card. I always do that. Yeah. I pull the credit card, thinking he's going to go, oh, no. Yeah. He goes, oh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> shit. I just had the biggest steak. On. I just had the most gigantic. Should have got quarter, the eight ounce. Quarter. Oh, I know. No, I went. <laughs> I went. What's, I went. Oh, I think mine was 15, 16 <laughs> ounces. Mine was like like a half a cow. I'm going, oh, I'm going, this is great. I'm getting treated here. <laughs> so, I thought he's a business guy. This all he does is. You should have said, dude, I'm not gay, but you're putting out tonight. <laughs> you're ridiculous. putting out the credit card. That's for damn sure. I could not believe it. So I paid for that meal. But once in a while, I do get my steak treats. Yeah. My, my wife, she's vegan. My wife, well, she calls herself veganish because mm, yeah. she'll eat fish. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, to me, like, it just, it's, the options are a little too limited. You know, some like, you know, I, I know some people who do it. I'm always like, how the heck are you a vegan at Thanksgiving? Like, that would be the day oh. I had to fall off the wagon. Yeah, off the wagon. Yeah, that's the day. By the way, day. go off the wagon for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's the day, man. That's another woke thing, by the way. People yeah. that are vegan yeah. get really yeah. angry with you. Yeah. Come on. Really? Come on. Let, let's, let's, you know, you weren't brought up like that. You know, no. you weren't always that way. I'm sure you're raised on meat. So relax and yeah. let us let us find our way, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to um, watch this video. I saw a little bit of it on my TV, but the volume was down. I said I'm going to have to watch this later. The a guy, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Sure. He did a video where he's saying that all these people talking about I'm, I'm eating plant-based. What are you doing in plant life? Like he has this whole <laughs> thing about how. Yeah? Yeah, you're trying to say one thing, but you're screwing up something else. No way. Is that what yeah, he said? Yeah, he said it. And I was like, I've got to. I've got to watch the interview with Neil talking about um, that's not eating plant based stuff is not good for the plants. Well, it's not good for <laughs> methane gas that's released. That had, seriously. Oh okay. God. You know that methane affects the ozone layer. Okay. And what, what's releasing the methane? When I eat broccoli, you know, you think it's good for you. I have methane <laughs> that's developing and released, taking down. You know, I could do a salad bar and take down half the ozone over Iowa. I mean, this is like, did you know that that's a big problem? Methane no, I didn't from know. cows farting, right? Okay. Because they eat grass. Yeah. They eat vegetables, they yeah. plants. Yeah. They fart. Then our ozone is affected. See? Oh. So there always is some. Maybe something. that was one of Neil's points because I had the volume down. <laughs> I also watched a documentary about a guy that just eats the sun. That's all he eats. I'm not kidding you now. I am not exaggerating. He eats the sun. He looks up at the sun. I tried this for him. <laughs> I really did. And then, by the way, he got caught because he was, like, claiming it. And it's the documentarian, like, caught him in the back of a restaurant. <laughs> eating <laughs> like, a real meal. Eating a real meal. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was interesting because you really can eat yeah. the sun, believe it or not. I oh, mean, wow. I somewhat. Didn't know that. You, know, you, could, okay. you could skip quite a few meals and just eat the sun. I know it sounds very strange. Yeah, I'm not planning on the sun diet anytime yeah, soon. Although, yeah, if I get laid from it, you might see me out <laughs> on a lounge chair staring. That's such an alpha thing to say. <laughs> right, the whole get laid thing. <laughs> listen, if you, seriously, I went a long time. It got so bad, Alicia. Listen, I don't know. 
I guess if you, I've known you since '98, you got to be a certain age, even though yeah, you're a I am. <laughs> are are you menopause age? Um, well, they call it perimenopause, yes. which means you're at the beginning of the menopause stage. Okay. Yeah. My wife is, and I think menopause means men on pause. You put yeah. the man on pause. Yeah. I think that must be where it comes from. Yeah. Well, she put me on, on pause, stop, yeah. you know, <laughs> whatever it was. But I got, I got it for me too. Yeah. Pellets put in our ass, not in the chute. But literally implant it in the ass. And what does that do? It's hormones like okay. testosterone, estrogen, whatever oh, the hell it is. I need to get some of that. I'm going to tell you about it after the show if you're interested. But yeah, it, I want some ass pellets. She was all over me, and what? I asked her, "Is this the pellets? Because it ain't the body." Because I like still have double got the up estrogen. on the pellets. I'm, I'm, I can't <laughs> wait. I'm going back. I can, as soon as that runs, it, it lasts like nine months. <laughs> I'm going to have a calendar and go back to this hero. This guy's a hero of mine who yeah. planted these things. Yeah. I have to tell him, by the way. Yeah, please. I need to know about these pellets. This is like an alpha celebration I'm on yeah, right now. Man. Yes. So, yes, yeah, she. Yeah. That's I could brilliant. not even believe it. Yeah, because you start getting a little bit more tired when you're in perimenopause. Right. So, right. the pellets give more energy, too. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we have a. Uh-huh. You might know this. I can't say her name. There's a comic who mm-hmm. I walk with. Okay. Well, I hike with her, and mm-hmm. I'm going, wow, you look amazing. She goes, it's, this, it's these pellets. She turned me on to this. Oh, she lost 20 pounds instantly. Oh, And, like, wow. has, like, the spring in her step This and is why else. the Lord sent me here today. <laughs> see, the yeah. ass pellets. It's, you see? It's in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Thou shalt take... <laughs> Pellets, <laughs> insert them s- surgically into the skin of your Maximus Glutimus. <laughs> so, yes. so, yes, that is yes. the case. It yeah. is just, look, if it works, it works. Yeah. And yeah. this apparently, at least one day, it's worked. Okay. Because during COVID, it was like, you know, this, that, was, that's a, that's a, that was a rough period. COVID was how, depressing. How did it work with your husband during COVID? <sighs> well, he's at home, right? He's, yeah, ne- but work from home, never stopped work from working. Home. Yeah. So he's in the so, other room with facts and figures. Yeah, just, you know, yeah, just all, you know, working the normal work hours. Did you like dance but, naked in front of him? Did, did he look up from his work or anything like that? Wear no, some panties? N- and- not during the work, but during the breaks. <laughs> <laughs> That's very kind you gotta of take, you. You got you to gotta wait for the breaks because when you're dealing with numbers and stuff, it's, it's like what we do. What we do is in our head. Yeah. You know, so if somebody jumps up on stage, we forgot the bit we were currently on. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. that's why you see comics going there, where was I? Right. You know, so it's like that with math and, and accounting right. and all that where stuff. Where was I? Yeah, where was and I? You can and you literally then, screw up someone's business. Screw from it. Oh, my goodness. Somebody might yeah. be paid. Like, I got a yeah. 27-cent ch- check. For uh, for Matlock, I could get twenty seven thousand dollars by him throwing a couple zeros because you threw your panties in front of him. Do that I took more some often. Pellets. Do that more often. When he gets to my check for, for my for my work on Coach, <laughs> whatever Murphy Brown. I've done I've done all that crap. The Hughleys. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. You. You. Yeah. Yeah. You've done a lot. But, yeah, the uh, the pellets. I'm going to blame it on the pellets. Whatever goes wrong mathematically, we'll blame it on the pellets. Man, I We need more pellets out there, I'm telling you. <laughs> so, oh, my God, this time just zipped by. But now we know why you were here. Yes. It was an intervention. We are clear. Yes, your accountant, hu- a alpha husband, about told me, to, told me to get with you on the pellets. Yes. So, kids... You know, do you have kids? No, I don't have any kids. Uh-uh. And I have, don't I have want nieces it. and nephews. No. <laughs> Boy, you gave me the look like, no. I don't want to be like you. I want nothing you have, Craig. I know you have four. That's good. Let let, let Aunt Alicia come over, Auntie. Yeah, I, I love I love the visitors. I love I love I love all my family members, all the kids in my family. I love for them to visit. And they eventually go home. <laughs> there is one racial thing that I will say right now. And that is the way you pronounce what you are to them. It's auntie. You say auntie, don't you? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah aunt. That's auntie. pretty much across the board with, with black. Yeah, white people say aunt. 
Yeah, I know. I did it, and then I corrected myself. Then I yeah. went to my 14% Ghana, yeah. and I said, auntie. Auntie, that's your, that's your Ghanaian. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> auntie, yep, Aunt Grace, Aunt everybody, yeah, yep. you're, we, we are across the board, yeah. But there's no unky, no, it's the uncle's uncle. just uncle. It's just, pronounced just the same uncle. way. Okay. Yeah, just uncle. But you love being an auntie. Yes. You, you go back there, you cuddle yes. with them, and then you get yes. to give them back. Get get to give them back. That's yes. the best. Because yes. I never understood. Like I'm like who? How, how? When you have a kid, you just created at least an 18 year bill for yourself. Then you're <laughs> getting cell phones for them. You created another monthly bill on top of the other 18 years of bills. It's just it's just a big bill. <laughs> I would name my kid Bill. <laughs> it is. It's unbelievable. It's, and it doesn't stop. And it does. I got a 23 year old not stopping. No. No. Mm-hmm. And they know how to con you. Yeah. I basically, yeah. I think a father is just a, a prostitute. <laughs> they, they don't want to be seen with you. Yeah. yeah. No photos. Yeah. Uh, hit you up for money. Yeah. Then they run, yeah. slam, bam. They get what they need. They boom, they're gone. <laughs> I'm just a prostitute. That's all I am. I, yeah. I live in a brothel. That's that's the home is the brothel. But <laughs> it's it's there's good there's good and there's you know it, it is what it is. But uh, so so and your husband does he have children? No, from another. Oh, okay, Mm-mm. so you guys committed to this. It's like hey, let's let's yeah. be together. Yeah, it's just connected. We don't yeah. need this other. You have animals. No. Oh. No living things. I can't have uh, animals. I can't have goldfish. I can't have plants. I'm just not good with living things. <laughs> the, the plants, it's, the plants are dead. Like yeah, nobody yeah. watered them. A goldfish. That's goldfish a big bird. Goldfish is just belly I can up. see how you would never do the goldfish. Let thing. me tell you how That's bad it was for me. To take those little pieces of food yeah. once a day, a pinch. It's a pinch. And to put that into the water, that is just... It's exhausting. Kid, I, it's I was, time it was, consuming. <laughs> it was bad. I, I remember I had some goldfish and I went to change the goldfish bowl because yeah. it needed to be clean. And I came back and all the goldfish were belly up. So I'm like, well, what happened? I stuck my finger in the water. The water was too high. The you water, had the heater too high? The water was too high. You burnt them to death. You're pretty much. I'm just not good with, with living things. So I, I know my limitations. And then when we grew up, you know, dogs poop wherever they poop. Now you got to walk behind them with a bag and yeah. grab hot poop off the ground How about and that? put it in your pocket. And That's too much another for me. thing it's in this generation that's changed. They yeah, nobody picked up dog poop. They have bags up. now out for you hanging from poles. In the neighborhood, they have little areas not, for you to grab it. Oh, a lot, I, of, I, lot of shaming. I'm not picking up no warm, A lot of shame signs hot poop. out there. Yeah, and people are looking at you. Did you pick that up? You know, fights are starting and. You know, so I'm like, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I'm with you on that. I'm, you know, and pet people. Yeah. Oh. You know, they're a whole other breed. No pet intended. I would intended. have to train my dog to poop in the toilet. Yeah, absolutely. I, I listen. I am with you, but I have to keep it secret. I'm whispering like no one can hear me. <laughs> like suddenly, they're downloading this, and now now they can't hear me because I don't want to offend the pet people. Because pet people are. It's unbelievable. Animal people, yeah. they don't even like humans. No. Like, the pets are ahead of humans. Yeah, they'll tell you. I don't. I, I like pets more than people. I hear that all the time. I don't get that. Yeah. They, w- yeah. they could literally, I'm not exaggerating, see a homeless person, scabby, almost dying, and then they'll see a dog, you know, that's limping. They'll step over the homeless person to get to yeah, I've seen it. to get to the dog, yeah. and it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, yeah you know, I'm yeah. not saying anything negative about the dog, yeah. although I wish they would wipe their own ass and clean their own <laughs> stuff up. I don't like that either. Is yeah. cleaning up poop? There's so, and the texture, even when you put those little bags of the little, you know, you, the texture, and then when it gets caught in the grass, it's like. We grew up, it's like, yeah, they just went everywhere. You didn't clean it up, and it just yeah. disintegrated eventually. Yeah, and there's toxins in poop. You know, nobody talks about the toxins. No, I don't know. I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, our dog just died, so oh, I'm, man. I'm trying and not to get another uh, one. And, yeah, well, I have one friend who loves dogs, and as soon as the, like, the dog dies on a Friday, she got another one on Saturday. I'm like, could we mourn Fluffy? <laughs> <laughs> God dang. <laughs> Yeah, poor Fluffy is like, wow, that didn't take long. I'm 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 replaced already. Geez, you probably killed me. 
<laughs> There's a dog pooping on a toilet here up on our screen. <laughs> it's called Dude Dude, dude um, Toby. Dude J. Uh, anyway, I you know I don't care to do that. It's like I have enough burdens in life. There are a ton of burdens yeah. that we have, especially you know in our career. There's a lot of no pun intended. There's a lot of shit to do. <laughs> We got a lot of shit to do. You got to book yeah. yourself. You got to yeah. get there. You got to do the show. You got to write the show. You got to change uh -huh. the material. You got to do all of that. You, you, you're you the director. You're trying to come up with whatever bits. Yeah. How do you come up with your material? What I do is I write down or, or audio tape anything that makes me laugh. Mm -hmm. So it has to make me laugh first. And then I'll, I'll write it down and I'll start it that way. That's the nucleus. You know, and then I'll go back and I'll build around it. But it just kind of, I don't I don't set out to write a new bit. Mm -hmm. It's just something I said or so, or something that happened or an observation. And then I'll um, audio record it mm -hmm. so that I won't forget what it was that was just said. And because and, I feel like if it made me laugh, I can sell it. Like I've had people try to give me jokes and I couldn't pull it off because it what didn't come organically from me. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't sell it, but I've had that know. happen too. Yeah. It's yeah. it's a different voice. Yeah. I had a guy I can say his name, Rich Scheidner. Do you know Rich Scheidner? I've heard the name. Rich Scheidner was huge mm -hmm. in the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. But I missed the career. I mean, he was huge. But I didn't really pay attention much to comedians and I used to hear about what a legend he was. Mm -hmm. Incredible comedian is what I would hear. And he retired from stand-up and sold me his bits like that worked. Okay. They never worked for me. <laughs> it wasn't my voice. This guy was killing with it. Yeah. I go, what does this mean? I'd have to call him and go, this lottery ticket thing. I, uh, what do you mean? They're parachuting in. I don't, I don't really get it. And, 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 and then, and then what, worse than that. Yeah. So I would do some of these bits, yeah. and then I and then I have all these people that are accusing me of stealing shit. I go, oh. I paid thirty thousand dollars for that shit. <laughs> I didn't steal yeah, it. I didn't steal it. I, I paid receipt. a lot. I paid a lot of money for this. <laughs> so that was yeah, not a good yeah. move. It, to yeah, have yeah. writers, yeah, uh, certain comics, you know, did it well. Yeah. Is if they have a certain rhythm, is Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah. Because you could write for Rodney. We could all write yeah. for Rodney because you yeah. get you get the yeah we get what he's doing yeah. It's yeah. it's a voice. It's yeah. a, these are bits. They're yeah. they're jokes that have a rhythm. It's mm -hmm. hey, I'll tell you, I got no respect at all. Hey, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it, it wouldn't even sound right for us to say it because no. it was just yeah. So you, yeah, you say it right now. Yeah. Say it right now. I ain't get no respect. Nah, I, I like, don't get no respect. <laughs> <laughs> I like that better. I think you might want to run with that. Just make it. Just change the word. <laughs> I don't get no love. <laughs> I don't get no. <laughs> oh, that could be your thing. We created some. There's another reason you were here today. You're the. You're, I'm the love master. You're the. I don't get no, no love, love, girl. I don't get no love. I don't, I don't get no, no love, love, girl. love, girl. I want you to name yourself that. I don't get no I'm, your love. Your Twitter handle and your. I went Instagram. to Motel Six and they didn't even leave the light on for me. <laughs> I don't get no love. <laughs> I'm the no love girl. <laughs> Hey, I'm telling you, I get no love. I had got... bought a box of condoms and they, they, they expired. Like cottage cheese. I went to Bill Cosby. He wouldn't even drug me. I don't get no love. I don't get no love. I couldn't get a roofie from Bill I Cosby. Get a roofie. He told me to get my own. I don't get no love. <laughs> I'm, gonna get, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I don't get no love, girl. <laughs> I got wet and I dried up. I don't get no. I think this is a bit. I think this is fantastic. I don't want any credit for it, but I'm gonna be sending you. I don't get no love jokes. I'm gonna keep. Let's on. do it at the Arlington. Where yes. are we gonna be together? I'm the love master, and you're. I'm, I'm gonna get, get no, no love, love because that'll that, that'll catch on. I'm telling you. I don't get no love. <laughs> I'm getting. I even like the way you say it. I don't get no love. I don't get no love. <laughs> my my husband's doing accounting. <laughs> I couldn't even tell. I couldn't even get him to give me a number. <laughs> You wouldn't even give me a number. I said, come on, honey. How about a pen? How about a, give me a pen? I don't get no love. I don't get no love. He can't even. He, 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 Not even on Valentine's <laughs> Day. <laughs> Valentine's Day, he filed for an extension. 
I don't get no love. I don't get no love. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to put some pellets in my ass and then <laughs> use them all up in his own ass. And I don't get no love. <laughs> I don't get no love. I asked for foreplay. <laughs> he gave me two play. <laughs> I don't get no love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, well, now we got a whole new act for you. <laughs> all right, that's why you came here today. That's why you I all heard it back. first here with Alicia Cooper. By the way, does anybody ever call you Alicia? Um, do, do some yeah, people, yeah. Well, yeah, people that have never like if they're trying to pronounce it and they see it written, yeah, they, they might say it that way. And yeah, some people mispronounce it that way. And uh, you know, in the Hispanic culture, that's what it is. You know, when I was in seventh grade, we took a, a Spanish class as part of the curriculum, and everybody had to they t- found out what your name was and gave you the Spanish version. Mm-hmm. And mine was Alicia. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, so. Alicia. Alicia. So, well, yeah. Alicia, you have a simple last name. I love the Cooper name. That's easy. But yeah. well, some people spell it C-O-P-P-E-R. I'm like, how are you messing up Cooper? Copper? They call you Copper? That, There's no other way you can do Cooper. It may be Cooper. There's only one way to spell it, and some people manage to jack that up. I don't get no love. <laughs> I get I get so few <laughs> orgasms. They took out both O's and Cooper. <laughs> I get no I love. Get no love. No. <laughs> no, my name's just Cooper. I'm Alicia <laughs> Copper. <laughs> I get no love. I get no love. So, uh, how do we find you on social media? Um, it's not Alicia Copper, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, Instagram is at Alicia Cooper two A L Y C I A. C O O P E R the number two. YouTube is Alicia Cooper. Please subscribe. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, fa- a fan book. Uh, I'm fan book. Facebook fan page is just my name, Alicia Cooper. So yeah, pretty much. Okay. That's the way to catch up. Right, with well, me. everybody, go follow Alicia Cooper, and you're going to follow the career that started right here. The new bit. I don't get no love, Alicia Cooper. Just Why remember- that's like a new R and B song? <laughs> I don't get no love. Today on WDAS, we've got Lisa Cooper with her number one hit, I Don't Get No Love. I Don't Get No Love. Here it is, folks. Spinning the tunes for you. I Don't Get No Love. Such a great hook. I'm so pissed. I can't, I can't, I've got to be, anyway. So we'll follow you, and all right, this goes out to everyone out there. YouTube, this is on YouTube. You can see what we all look like. And you can watch the words come out of our mouth and the bits and the fun. And the, hopefully you had fun today. Uh, spread that word. Uh, let people know where the fun is. It's like a party. It's like a party that you're all invited to. So invite other people. It can never get too crowded. We're all in this together. We're all one on the planet. We talked about that. It is about getting love and getting laughter and getting some levity and getting some light. And just remember, spread the word and take this with you always. Enlighten the fuck up, will you? <laughs> See you next time.